Recently, it was announced that Robert Downey Jr., who is world famous, a global superstar known for his portrayal of Tony Stark in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, will play Victor Von Doom in the said Marvel Cinematic Universe in the upcoming Avengers 5 and 6. When it was announced, both the people present at the San Diego Comic Con as well as people on the internet cheered their hearts out. And it fascinates me how this announcement was made two days after the release of Deadpool and Wolverine, another film that brings back a beloved actor who is a global superstar known for a portrayal of an iconic comic book character. Robert Downey Jr.'s Tony Stark had been the face of MCU for 11 years. Looking back at the Infinity Saga, it is one of the most well-constructed story arcs in the history of cinema, with a story running for 11 years and 23 films. Tony Stark's first film ends with the iconic line, I am Iron Man. And that is the very thing he repeats right before sacrificing his life for the entire universe. If you had watched Avengers Endgame in the theatres, I want you to remember, I want you to recall the mass hysteria followed by the absolute silence, which was followed by the sounds of people sobbing in the theatre. That was the impact Avengers Endgame had on the entire world. A perfect bookend to the Infinity Saga. Knowing that this would be the last we would see of Tony Stark in the Marvel Cinematic Universe added much more weight to that scene. And before any of you dumb fuck comments that Robert Downey Jr. is coming back as a different character, just shut the fuck up. Because Robert Downey Jr. is Tony Stark. But for the sake of this discussion, we will accept Robert Downey Jr. as a completely different character. But in the film, either there is going to be a pointless, senseless reason behind why Victor Von Doom looks exactly like Tony Stark or there will be a scene where Deadpool jokes about it. And all of us would have a uh, chuckle in the theatre. Ha ha, oh, what a clever joke. Or maybe Doctor Doom would be a multiverse variant of Tony Stark. If it is a completely different character, why is not a different actor playing this character? As far as I know, fans really wanted to see Killian Murphy as Doctor Doom. And ever since Peaky Blinders and Oppenheimer, his stardom has skyrocketed as well. The answer to all of these concerns is a phrase Shut the fuck up! RDJ was announced to be playing Doctor Doom two days after the release of Deadpool and Wolverine, a film that brought back Chris Evans but not as Captain America but Johnny Storm from the 2005 Fantastic Four film, setting up how different characters throughout the multiverse can have the same face. But here's the thing, in the film, it's just a punchline. And secondly, it only complicates the rules of the multiverse in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, which by the way are already non-existent. And I know people do not love those Fantastic Four films or definitely not the Daredevil or Elektra films. So it's not particularly the excitement of seeing those characters back on screen. Like no one was a big fan of Elektra. No one was a big fan of those Fantastic Four films. So it's not the excitement of seeing Elektra or Johnny Storm on screen. Perhaps you watched Elektra when you were a kid and life was simple. So seeing Jennifer Garner back on screen as Elektra reminds you, makes you nostalgic of that life, of that simpler time. Seeing Chris Evans on screen makes you nostalgic for the time he played Captain America in the Avengers films. Apart from being a god-awful film in, in and of itself, one of the major criticisms of the Black Widow film was that Black Widow is dead in the main timeline. So what's the point of seeing a prequel film that tells us what she did between Captain America Civil War and Avengers Infinity War? It's pointless. And fair enough, it is, it definitely is pointless. But I wonder why the same logic is not applied to other legendary portrayals of characters by actors. If Professor X gets killed in a very heartbreaking scene and later Logan sacrifices his life so that the future of mutant kind can be saved in what is considered to be one of the greatest comic book movies of all time, then what is the point of seeing an alternate version of Professor X played by the same actor only to have his neck snapped by Wanda Maximoff? Or what is the point of finding out what an alternate version of Wolverine played by Hugh Jackman is doing in a, in a bar in the middle of the day? Why is he day drinking? What did go wrong? What did he do? What's the point of knowing all this when we have a perfect bookend to his character and to his story? Jurassic World Dominion brought back the original cast. The Flash 
brought back Michael Keaton as Batman and even George Clooney as Batman. But we have to see that both Jurassic World Dominion as well as The Flash had no fucking clue what to do with those characters. It is less frustrating in that case because the original cast of the Jurassic Park and Michael Keaton's Batman were not dead in their timeline. But still, not writing a compelling story, not knowing what to do with those characters, still disrespect those actors as well as the characters that they are portraying. Being unable to write compelling stories and hoping that people would watch those films based on nostalgia might not work anymore. In case of Marvel, old characters are brought back and killed. Some which were dead already, some which were not. Boner. <laughs> After a streak of failed films, bringing back Robert Downey Jr. into the MCU was definitely a desperate move. An attempt by Marvel to bait their fans into filling the theatre seats. And I guess they will succeed with that. There is a very thin line between fan service and nostalgia baiting. And in the last few years, Marvel really has lost track of where that line was. But you know what I think? I think that I'm a bumbling, rambling buffoon on the internet trying to make people understand why the storytelling of a multi-billion dollar corporation does not make sense anymore. But ask yourself, if we can cheer at the disrespect of one of the best comic book movies, one of the most iconic portrayals of comic book characters by global superstars, only to be able to see those characters on screen one more time, regardless of whether the story makes sense or not, or the story has enough material to stand on its own. Was Martin Scorsese actually right about Marvel not being cinema and being more of a theme park? 